Washington, the McLaughlin Group, the American Original. For over two decades, the sharpest minds, best sources, hardest talk. The McLaughlin Group is brought to you by MetLife. Guarantees for the if in life. And by Mississippi Development Authority. Visit Mississippi.org to see what we can do for you. Issue 1, United We Stand. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This July 4th weekend, we as a nation salute the Declaration of Independence. It was signed 232 years ago. The purpose of the Declaration of Independence was to make clear to the world why the colonists were separating from Great Britain and why that separation was honorable and just. Thomas Jefferson emphasized in his text of the Declaration that the people have the right to change their government if and when that government becomes repressive. His chief argument is that government proceeds from, quote, the consent of the governed, unquote. If the government loses that consent, it then lacks the authority to govern. The 56 signers also agreed that these united colonies are, and of right ought to be, free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown, and that all political connection between them and the state of Great Britain is and ought to be totally dissolved and that as free and independent states they have full power to levy war, conclude peace, contract alliances, establish commerce, and to do all other acts and things which independent states may of right do." Unquote. The first to sign the declaration was the President of the Continental Congress, John Hancock. After scripting his big and bold signature, Hancock said, quote, we must be unanimous. There must be no pulling different ways. We must all hang together. Unquote. On hearing these words, Benjamin Franklin is said to have replied, quote, Yes, we must indeed all hang together. Or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. Question. Citizens of the original 13 colonies identify themselves not as Americans, but as Virginians or Vermonters. The concept of national identity hardly existed. So how severe was this in the early days? How severe was sectionalism as a problem? And what did it focus on? Mort. Well, we had, uh, or they had the advantage in a sense of having a common enemy. It was really the way Britain responded to these colonies that really brought these colonies together. They had vastly different political theories, vastly different economic interests. They had many competitions in ver at various levels, but ultimately it was the struggle against England that really brought them together and kept them together. What's, what's even separated? after even after the success against England, though, they had very different forms of government. You had Alexander Hamilton on one side, you had Jefferson on the other. So you had very, very different views of what the government ought to be and what kind of a government. But they did hang together. What separated them? Uh, self-interest. Um, and it's always in our government been a struggle between self-interest and national unity to confront common problems. And to bring this into the modern era, uh, we are in the midst of a presidential campaign, which is really all about unity as opposed to the device of policies and partisanship of the past. I think a new politics is struggling to be born. The old politics is still alive and well of character assassination. There'll be plenty of that. But I thought it was telling that at Tim Russert's memorial mass that the two presidential candidates uh, made a point of sitting together and I thought that was a, a show of unity in, uh, in Tim's memory that 
I appreciate and the country appreciates. You know what's amazing about America? The more things change, the more they stay the same. And those founding fathers had squabbles like crazy. And the first dirty politics, the first negative campaigning, that was Thomas Jefferson against John Adams. In fact, the only founding father who really stayed above it all was, was George Washington, Washington who yeah. self-limited himself to only two terms and set the precedent going forward. But all of these colonies, which later became states, they all had separate interests. As Mort points out, economic interests. The southern states had interests with regard to tobacco and slavery. The northern states had separate interests regarding maritime trade and so on. And they all had these competing interests coming forward, but they did have that common enemy that brought them together. You'll notice, though, that in when it came time to verify the uh, Declaration of Independence, it was unanimous, save one colony, which was, save one state, rather, which was New York, which abstained. <laughs> uh, you think that exhausts the subject? Trade, <laughs> tariffs, slavery, uh, as far as sectionalism was concerned? Well, also the rights of women, property rights. Did married women or even single women have the right to own their own property? Um, so the issues go on and on. And what's, what is so interesting is that in one way or another, these are all issues that still divide the nation today. Slavery is no longer permissible in the United States, but we do have a problem with race relations. Race still is a divisive issue. How to deal with Britain at that period in time. Today we're talking about it in the context of the war on terrorism and the war in Iraq. These Let's, are all issues that we still I'm deal with. I'm glad that you brought this up because today we have disunifiers. The Iraq war. Race as Barack Obama leveled the playing field. Poverty. 33 million Americans live below the poverty line. Abortion. Roe v. Wade still is a contentious subject for many. Federal entitlement programs like Social Security, their explosive expansion. Health care growing more and more unaffordable. Trade and budget deficits spending through the roof. Low savings rates and massive consumer credit card debt. Foreign debt over $10 trillion uncompetitive educational system, and skyrocketing college tuition, ongoing worries over nuclear proliferation, global warming. Very, very uh, troubling, that list. But there is, there are oddities. For example, 66% of Americans, that's the consensus, they oppose the Iraq war. So the Iraq war, so-called disunifier, has actually united two-thirds of Americans. <laughs> well, true or false? Well, <laughs> it is true. It, it, it is true that it has united two-thirds of Americans, but it is still a very divisive issue. It is going to play a very critical role in our 2008 election in terms of, you know, we have John McCain saying that we will be in Iraq for 100 years. We have uh, Barack Obama saying he wants to with withdraw troops uh, as soon as possible. And so for that reason, it will continue to be a very divisive issue. And very important as we go on to discuss national security, terrorism, and who is best uh, situated to govern our country in what, the future. What shatters the illusion that uh, the old times were better than the new times? What shatters that illusion? Well, frankly, we've made phenomenal progress in this country on so many issues, including the, the more equitable distribution of the bounty of this country. We've made enormous progress in terms of race relations. We have made enormous progress vis-a-vis -vis women. Uh, this country has emerged as the dominant power in the world. Uh, we have made incredible progress. There's no other country yeah. in the world, in my judgment, well, also, that has made as much progress as we have in a short amount of time. We had, over, 600, we had over 600,000 Americans lose their lives in the Civil War. Well, I'm, listen, yeah. we've had, and we will continue to have, undoubtedly, those kinds of terrible events in our history in which the lives of people are going to be lost in the pursuit of some... But the fact is we have improved the lives of more people than any other country well, we have, in the world by a big a, margin. We have a political system where we're able to fight out these issues, except we are now at a point where the American public is wondering whether that political system can function at all. And I think we've seen extraordinary anger in the country at the political class. There is anger, but if you look well, at and, 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 and they're, and they're but, right but, about well, but, but if you compare us to other countries, this is the greatest democracy right. in the world. When we have elections, right. people don't no, get murdered. And that's and always question. been the case. There have always been periods of depression. People have very different views on how to deal with the depression. We have very different views on how to deal with our present problems. But as you say, that yes, is a but, democracy, but the public and we do work in it through. A democracy it will begin to force change, and I think that's why we are at a piv pivotal point. And in terms of living back then, I would just cite the fact they didn't have any anesthesia, and if you watch <laughs> the John Adams uh, series on HBO and you right. saw his daughter being operated on for breast cancer, right. no, no uh, anesthesia, just... 
the knife. Right. I mean, I you would, realize that health advances. And, and I would point out the technology has brought us together. Do you care to elaborate oh, 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 on that? Absolutely. What plus, am I talking about? Plus, we're beyond outhouses, which What's is the always a What's good the technology thing. I'm thinking of? Oh, the, the technology, medical technology. TV, in particular. Oh, TV. radio, mass help unite the mass sections of the country. The, interstate the idea highway, is to bring the interstate the highway system, right. the airlines. The Have we cleared the hurdle of the power of the federal government vis-a-vis -vis the states? Isn't that a harmonious arrangement we have now? Isn't By that encouraging? Large, yes, we look because of because of the nature of how the economy has developed and how our society has developed. We look more and more to the central government to resolve a lot of difficulties. But, Not and totally, it works. But, yeah, and it, it works. Can you imagine how they were tiptoeing through but, this, feeling their but, way? Yeah, but, but, but we have a system, frankly, a system of government that can be paralyzed because of the way we've divided power. So it's not always that we can what address does that the issue. Yeah. It means, for example, we haven't been able to address the issue of health care. We haven't been able to address the issue of energy. We haven't been able to uh, address the issue of... of uh, Is that always the side? structure of the country? It's, it's because we have not been able to form a government which is responsible for these issues, it's which has the power... So we did have not lick that the problem. Under the British fathers, system, you have the, the, both the, executive power and legislative the, power the in one party. Are you an Anglophile? Are you recommending I, 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 moved, I moved here from an Anglophile yeah. country. Country. So I'm more American than almost anybody well, that I know. The founding, the founding fathers well, built in a lot of checks and balances, and right now we're struggling on the issue of offshore dr uh, drilling, which the president and John McCain has uh, overturned long-held uh, beliefs in this country that that should be off limits to oil uh, drilling, and they're saying now it should be up to the states and they should be given financial uh, incentives. Frankly, as a citizen of the country, I think I have some say over whether well, we drill for oil off the coast right, of Florida. Right, you know what, getting back, so, to, the, getting back to the question the of gridlock, tension. a lot of voters actually like gridlock. They don't appreciate the government into every corner and, and aspect of American life, and that's why so many voters split ticket. They'll vote Republican for president and Democrat for the Congress. They, they like that uh, inability of the government to actually go actually, ahead and they want and the government to act no, now. They, they, they want the government to change. Oh, oh, we're talking change. about whether or not we are evolving uh, as a nation and as a species. We've had no real serious, not serious, but high, high, high casualty war since World War II. Is that not due to uh, I think the Vietnam, nuclear bomb Vietnam and the was fact a that we have mutual, mutual assured <laughs> deterrence? Figure that out. <laughs> Are you with me? I am. I am with you. I hear you, John. <laughs> um, nobody wants war. Nobody wants war. Because I, absolutely. Because the nuclear bomb is a threat in the background, providing the kind of deterrence but, that we well, need in is, John, that is, crazy way. Well, it is not the kind of deterrent that we would think it has been in the past. Look at Iran. Iran is a huge problem for us. If Iran gets nuclear weapons. It will be a huge problem for the United States, for Israel, and the rest well, of the Iran world. Well, Iran did not use uh, weapons of mass destruction against the Iraqis when they had that eight-year war, and they had the, had the chemical and biological weapons to do it. That's true, but that's well, not... Let's not get ahead of where Iran really is. Iran. Exit question. Eighty percent of Americans think that our country is on the wrong track. Eighty percent. Are America's best days behind it? You've answered this already. Do you, you want to be satisfied with that? Uh, no, I'm not satisfied with it. I actually think they're unhappy with where we are now, but it doesn't mean that the best days of this country are behind it. They uh, don't like the government. Uh, a new president, especially a President Barack Obama, would put a new face on America for the world, and I think uh, the problems that we have can be, uh, can, can be fixed by leadership. We need leadership. Eleanor is saying that the complaint is against our politicians. Uh, right, right. It's, no. not, it's against our, you know, they're complaining uh, about the economy. Well, yes. But fundamentally, the American people are optimistic about this Absolutely. country. Is that Absolutely. true? Absolutely, right. and that's always been the case since day one in this country. Americans are pioneering. We've got the pioneering spirit. We're optimists by nature. And every age has had its serious problems. This age is not exempted from that. Are you saying that, that the blue... And, and every age that has come next has been better Better than the one that preceded it. The bloom, so is, the bloom is not off the American dream. Not off, not off the is road. the bloom no. off the dream? No, America is the greatest nation in this world, and we will continue to move forward. Exactly. Uh, here, the polls here. show that many people feel that the next generation's living style will not be up to the par of the parents. So we do have a certain decline in standards. Well, where do you uh, come down on the issue? Are we pessimistic or optimistic? Uh, look, I mean, I'm, I think there's so much excitement about the election that shows a, an optimism. I'm you optimistic. You mean Ob Obama alone generates all yes, this optimism? John, yes, John. Yes, <laughs> John. When we come back, are the Republicans facing a negative realignment vis-a-vis -vis the Democrats, and could it last for decades?
As the world grows smaller, the ifs are now bigger than ever. If retirement savings can't keep pace with longer lives, if inflation sends the cost of employee benefits higher. For over 135 years, MetLife has provided insurance guarantees for life's many ifs. We have the experience, global resources, and vision to provide financial certainties for an uncertain world. No wonder more than two-thirds of the Fortune 500 choose us. After all, we are MetLife. We've provided a platform for success for some of the most respected companies in the country. We fueled their growth with a highly educated workforce and a can-do pro-business attitude. Just ask our newest business partner, Toyota. Visit Mississippi.org to see what we can do for you. Issue two, is George W. Bush, quote unquote, radioactive? The president's the face of the party. He is absolutely radioactive at this point. Bush radioactive. Former National Republican Congressional Committee Chairman you know, Tom Davis is frustrated on and very gloomy. We're seen it as appendage uh, to President Bush. And uh, between an uh, unpopular war, you take a look at the gas prices, the housing costs and everything, we are being tied to that. In the House of Representatives, three seats held special elections this year. In the last six months, Democrats have picked up three longtime Republican seats. The GOP on March 8th lost an Illinois seat to a Democrat. Republican House Speaker Dennis Hastert had occupied the seat for 22 years. Hastert resigned in November. In May, Republicans lost a Louisiana House seat that has been in Republican hands also for 22 years since 1986. And most recently, Republicans lost a Mississippi special election. That seat had also been held by Republicans for 14 years. Question, how toxic is the Bush legacy for all 173 Republican House members up for re-election and 23 of the 49 Senate Republicans? Uh, Monica Crowley. Here's what Republicans have to do going into November. Number one, pray. <laughs> Number two, if the president offers to come to your district and campaign for you, for your life. Uh, opt for the cardboard cutout of <laughs> President Bush rather than the actual guy. And they also have to run, they have to get back to conservative principles. They have to talk about reducing the size of government, lower taxes, fighting the war on terror, continuing that on, a, on the offense, talking about a national energy strategy uh, in a very real, tangible way because gas prices are, are dominating the conversation and also talk about the need to appoint conservative well, judges. Let, also, me, let, maybe let, let me let me go ahead with this uh, exit question and you can fill it in uh, with your own point now. Exit question. Is it too soon to conclude the following about the Bush Cheney legacy? One, they destroyed the GOP congressional majority. Two, tanked the value of the dollar. Three, created unprecedented red ink in the federal budget. Four, drew us into a quagmire in Iraq, five, left us with a recession, recession and inflation, six, then skedaddled out of town. The question is, <laughs> is it too soon to conclude that the foregoing constitutes the Bush-Cheney legacy? Suckerman. Well, I mean, I think you uh, probably have weighted the case just slightly, John. I don't know why I <laughs> What are the that. redeeming uh, features? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, the one thing that you have to uh, imagine, okay, is that... Imagine. The, 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 no, it the, doesn't that, exist. No, excuse me. That the terrorist threat is something that might have been a lot worse uh, had he not been as forceful as he was. And the thing that I think astonishes everybody about this administration is not that their policies, but how incompetent they were in administering their policies. Well, the notion that the terrorist threat would have been worse if he had not acted the way he did does not excuse a, a war of choice in Iraq that was then needlessly and poorly uh, managed. And also, you left off the list, shredded the, the U.S. Constitution. I thought your list was, was pretty good. And that's why, uh, that's why President Bush has a 29% Approval rate. Well, well, treat it as the, abri it. Treat it as the abridged version or the <laughs> okay, executive summer. He, he, has a, he has a higher disapproval right. rating than Richard Nixon did in the last right. week of his presidency. Right. What about Truman was the lowest, though? 
I believe. Well, by two points, he was at 27. I think oh, Bush has time. That's a lower thing. Well, he has time. <laughs> okay, so that was points. a pretty loaded question, John. And I do think it's too soon to pass judgment on the Bush-Cheney uh, legacy. They still have a couple of more months in office. Anything could happen. But on Ward's point, you talking point, about Israel? This is, this is, well, a number of things could happen. The economy could improve. And by the way, we're winning the war in Iraq now. Is there now, any other way which, for the economy to go? Even the left-wing media that opposed the war, like the Associated Press and so on, now admits we're winning Can in Iraq. Can you describe what there winning are a lot is? Of winning? The, what does that the, mean? Violence is down <laughs> dramatically, Eleanor. There's political reconciliation happening uh, like mad in Iraq. And all those that doesn't mean that it's not reversible, but the progress is in the right direction. And I will say that um, in terms of, of the Bush Cheney legacy, there is some time to go, and it's too early to pass. Well, judgment. here's here's well. here here is something positive that I hope we would all agree on about the Bush Cheney legacy, despite all of the negatives that you just listed, which are all probably correct. The Bush, the, President Bush has brought education to the forefront of our national discussion. For the first time in a very long time, people are talking about what happens in our K-12 system and how we prepare the future for a 21st century but workforce. But no child left behind. A lot of it, but, but, we are having, but, but we are having the discussion. We have well, never had this discussion before. It is a national discussion. It is an important one to have regardless of how you feel about no child left behind. And also, to President Bush's credit, for the first time, I think, in a very long time, we are actually talking about women's rights as human rights in the Middle East. We have had these discussions with Saudi Arabia, with Egypt, with Pakistan, with Iraq, and even in Iran, and I credit the administration for doing that. I think those are redemptive features. I also think Maud's point is, is quite helpful, helpful to redeem, and that is we haven't had a terrorist attack of uh, the kind of significance that brought us all to our knees with September the 11th. We'll be right back with predictions. The McLaughlin Group is brought to you by Mississippi Development Authority. Visit Mississippi.org to see what we can do for you. We've provided a platform for success for some of the most respected companies in the country. We fueled their growth with a highly educated workforce and a can-do pro-business attitude. Just ask our newest business partner, Toyota. Visit Mississippi.org to see what we can do for you. If, for such a small word, it packs a wallop. If I live to 100, if Social Security isn't enough, if my heart gets broken, if she says yes. We believe if should never hold you back. If should be managed with coverage that builds on what you already have. Together, we can create a personal safety net, a launching pad, for all those brilliant ifs in the middle of life. Call on our expertise and get guarantees for the if in life. After all, we're MetLife. Predictions more. Well, one of the other legacies of the Bush administration is the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. But this means that we are not going to have the Federal Reserve increasing uh, the uh, federal funds rate over the, next, for, over the rest of this year. What are you talking about, the greatest downturn? We are going to have the most serious recession since the Great Depression. I've said this before on this program. It's going you to haven't be the gone most that far, have you? Oh, yes, I have, and I believe it, and I've said it, and I've written it. Absolutely. Oh, no. uh, the ban on gay marriage on the California state ballot will fail. I'm not sure about Florida yet. Those are the two states involved. The so-called truce between Israel and Hamas over Gaza will last two months or less. Barack Obama will accept the Democratic nomination on August 28th of, on the 45th anniversary of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. Good. I'm glad you salvaged some, some positive outlook here <laughs> in this sea, in this ocean of negativity. I predict that Guantanamo Bay will be closed by July 4, 2009. Have a happy and safe 4th of July weekend. Bye-bye.